Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. It is a blessing to come before you once again. I give all honor, glory, and praise unto the Most High, the Lord God of Israel. So I pray everyone is doing well. Uh, go ahead and get your Bibles out. We are going to read today from the book of Job, uh, Job chapter 27. And make sure you do have a pen and paper so you can take notes and follow along in your own Bibles. And let us begin reading. And this is Job continuing his parable. In the book of Job, chapter 27, verse 1. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth, who has taken away my judgment, and the Almighty, who has vexed my soul. And this word vexed means affliction. And it says, in verse 3, all the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, because it is God's breath that we breathe. In verse 4, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. So if you recall in the previous chapters, Job's friends, they would... Uh, try to come against Job, try to accuse him of doing some kind of evil. And notice how Job responded to his friends. He did not try and come against them, you know, as far as railing. And I want us to uh, read a verse in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 through 12. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, 8 through 12, because this reminds us how we are to treat one another. You are going to have those who do falsely accuse you, but what should your response be back to them? In 1 Peter chapter 3, let's read verses 8 through 12, and it reads, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, Love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrariwise blessing, knowing that you are thereunto called, that you should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, just as Job is saying that he would um, refrain his lips. He says in verse four, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. So in first Peter chapter three, I'll read verse 10 again. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. You want to enter into eternal life you must refrain your tongue from evil, even now, today. And his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew or stay away, frown upon and hate evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open, are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Okay, so God was not against Job. He was putting him through a test, allowing this test to come upon him to see, would he still remain faithful to him? Will he still serve God, not curse God? Okay, so Job is letting his friends know here in this parable Remember what a parable is? A short story with the spiritual meaning. So there's going to be some spiritual understanding we get as we read these parables. Back to Job chapter 27, verse 4 again. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. Okay, and verse 5. God forbid that I should justify you till I die. I will not remove my integrity from me. So Job is not going to argue with his friends um, about all that they had tried to accuse Job of. 
but he trusted in God. Job had fear towards the Most High, although he had lost his family, his wealth, and his health. Um, he still would not allow his friends to take away his faith in God. So no matter what people do to you, you still keep your faith in the Most High. No matter what the circumstances are, what you go through in life, you maintain your integrity, just like Job. He says, that's something you can't take away from me. Okay, because men, wicked men, they can come, they could take away all of your possessions, right? Thieves break in and steal everything you have, but you will still have your faith. That's something no one can take away from you. And Satan is after our faith, trying to get the sons and daughters of God to turn away from God. And you must be just like Job, maintain your integrity and let it be known that no one can take that faith away from you. Verse six, my righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Let mine enemy be as the wicked and he that rises up against me as the unrighteous. For what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he has gained when God takes away his soul? So let us look back at um, Job's three friends. We're going to look at each one. So first turn to Job chapter eight, looking at Bildad. In Job chapter eight, we will read verse 8 through 13. Job chapter 8, 8 through 13. And this is Bildad. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday and know nothing, because our days, because our days upon earth are a shadow. Shall not they teach thee and tell thee and utter words out of their heart? Can the rush grow up without the mire? Can the flag grow without water? While it is yet in his greenness and not cut down, it withers before any herb. Verse 13. So are the paths of all that forget God, and the hypocrite's hope shall perish. Okay, and now Job chapter 15, looking at Eliaphaz. Again, all three of Job's friends have this same language. Job chapter 15, verse 34, Eliaphaz speaking. For the congregation of the hypocrites shall be desolate, and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. And now we're going to look at Zophar. In Job chapter 20, verse 4 through 5. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? So go back to Job chapter 27, verse 8 again. For what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he is gained? when God takes away his soul. And now turn to the book of Matthew. We're going to see that Jesus has also uh, let us know concerning this same verse. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26. Turn to Matthew chapter 16 and we will read verse 26. It said, what is the hope of the hypocrite? And Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. We see the same language throughout the Bible. You'll notice as you're reading and studying, which hopefully brothers and sisters are reading and studying, you will see that it's repetitive. You know, the same thing being said over and over just might be in another way or giving more details. 
and our God is a very wise God. He does this so that way it can really resonate and set in your hearts and your minds what it is he's trying to speak to you, what it is he's trying to show you. So Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, for what is a man profited or benefit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So Job here in this verse um, eight, for what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he is gain when God takes away his soul? So what is it that you're willing to give in exchange for your soul? You know, are you willing to um, sell out and betray your brothers and sisters just so you can have fame, uh, just so you can have money, riches on this earth? You know, what, what will it profit or benefit you to have all these things and then to just lose your soul at the end of it all, when you have to stand before the Most High and hear the words, depart from me. Uh, you don't want to hear those words, okay? So verse number um, nine, again, we're back in Job chapter 27 and verse nine. Will God hear his cry when trouble comes upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? Verse 11, I will teach you by the hand of God that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. So I do have a few verses uh, written down I want to show you because I believe, and this is my opinion, I'm going to just throw it out there, that verse 11 is prophetic of speaking of Jesus, who is the greatest teacher. He's the greatest instructor who will teach us. And he would not conceal or hide the Father, but he would reveal and make known the Father unto us. Again, we'll read Job chapter 27, verse 11, to keep the thought, and then I'll take you to a few scriptures. I will teach you by the hand of God that which is with the Almighty, or you could say of the Father, will I not conceal. So let us turn to the book of John. John chapter 6. Again, keep your place in Job and turn to John chapter 6, verse 43 through 45. John chapter 6. Verse 43 through 45. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, speaking to his disciples, murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father comes unto me. And then John chapter 15, a few chapters over, turn to John chapter 15, verse 12 through 15. Because Job is speaking a parable and it has a spiritual meaning. And I do believe this could be prophetic of Jesus, uh, revealing the Father, teaching us and instructing us of the Almighty. So John chapter 15, verses 12 through 15. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, or from this day forward, 
I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I've called you friends. Here it is. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. And remember Job chapter 27 and 11, I will teach you by the hand of God, that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. And then Psalms chapter 34, Psalms chapter 34, 11 through 16, and also verse 21. So Psalms chapter 34, 11 through 16, and verse 21. And it reads, Come, you children, hearken or listen unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. So only a person who fears God can teach or instruct, lead, and guide others. Verse 12, What man is he that desires life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Just as Job had mentioned that he would keep his uh, lips from speaking wickedness in verse 4 of Job chapter 27. He would, his tongue would not utter deceit because Job had the fear of God. And when you have the fear of God, then you would do that which God commanded you to do. You would know if I go against God, there's going to be some punishment, some wrath to come your way. So going back to Psalms chapter 34, I'm going to finish reading this out. We are reading from verses 11 through 16 in Psalms chapter 34. Verse 13 again says in Psalms chapter 34, Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Verse 16. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. And then verse 21, again in Psalms chapter 34, verse 21. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. So going back to the book of Job, Job chapter 27, and we left off with verse um, 11. I will teach you by the hand of God that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. So you can see... Um, Jesus and how he would teach and instruct us of the Almighty, of the Father. Okay, and now verse 12. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are you thus altogether vain? Verse 13. Again, I'm back in Job chapter 27. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of the oppressors or their inheritance, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. So I do want us to take a look at Psalms chapter 21, verse 8 through 11, because the wicked's offspring says uh, that they would not be satisfied with bread. And you can see an example of this in the book of Esther. You know, Haman and his, um, his sons, right, his offspring, you could see what happened to them in their end. They would not be satisfied with bread, but they would be cut off. So Psalms chapter 21, verse 8 through 11 Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thine right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. 
the Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Again, I'm in Psalms chapter 21. I'm going to read 10 through 11. Their fruit shall they shall thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men or their offspring. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Okay, so God will cut off the offspring of the wicked. All the wicked and their offspring shall be cut off. Okay, and now back to Job chapter 27. We read verse 13. I'll read it again to keep the thought. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of the oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. Verse 14, if his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. And so I did read that verse uh, twice, but, you know, just to keep the thought, because I don't want to lose you brothers and sisters as we're turning to these other books of the Bible gaining that understanding. I want you to follow along. So verse 15 now, those that remain of him shall be buried in death and his widows shall not weep. So he's not going to have a proper burial being the wicked and no one's going to be weeping over the wicked, his widows. Okay, and now, um, Verse 16, and an example, excuse me, I just thought of for verse 15, you know, when um, it was one of our sisters that spoke of in the Bible, um, you know, she was married to a wicked man and it would be um, King David who would then later take her for his wife. I believe it were Nabal um, she was married to. Um, and I can't think of our sister's name right now. It did slip my mind. Let me see if I could just pull that up just so that you brothers and sisters can maybe go back and read that story and see um, Abigail, Abigail and Nabal. You can see how, you know, he was a wicked man. And when the Most High had taken him out, I don't read that she was weeping. But I read that King David came and took her for his wife. So it's a beautiful love story um, concerning Abigail and, um, you know, how King David would come and take her for his wife. And I believe that starts in 1 Samuel chapter 25. Okay. So that had just come to my mind um, as concerning this verse, because, you know, she had become a widow after her husband had died. So verse 15 again, those that remain of him shall be buried in death and his widows shall not weep. Verse 16, again, I'm back in Job chapter 27. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. He builds his house as a moth and as a booth that the keeper maketh. So Job spoke in parables of a man who had plenty. And as I was reading this, the parables of, that the Messiah would speak had come to my mind. So I want us to read this parable. I know some may, may think it's strange to read a parable within a parable, but see the similarities here, okay? I'm not asking anyone to agree with what I'm trying to um, teach you and show you, you know, we should all be studying to show ourselves approved, but I just want to show you that, which, you know, was brought to my attention from the most high. I can only share it with you, but 
this book of Job can be taught many different ways, brothers and sisters. So do not think that this is the only right way. You know, there are many different ways the Most High can reveal his mysteries to, to us. So Luke chapter 12, it was a parable the Most High, uh, the Messiah had spoke of. Luke chapter 12, verse 16 through 21. I just want to read this parable to you, then we'll go back and read um, Job chapter 16, or chapter 27, verse 16 again. So we are in Luke chapter 12, verse 16 through 21. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And Another parable I want to take you to, Luke chapter 6. Turn back a few chapters to Luke chapter 6. We're going to read verse 24 through 25. In Luke chapter 6, verse 24 through 25. And this, is, excuse me, is not another parable, but it's something that Jesus would say. Okay, so listen up. But woe unto you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. So go back to Job chapter 27. Um, Job speaking in parables, and we read a parable that Jesus would teach or instruct his disciples, you know, instructing us concerning a rich man who had plenty, but at the end of it all, whose would it be, right? Naked came I out of my mother's womb, naked shall I return. Job understood this. Okay, so Job chapter 27 and I'm going to read verse 16 again, and we'll go on down. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. Because at the end of it all, when it's all said and done, all that the wicked had accumulated is going to the righteous. We shall inherit it all, just like our ancestors coming out of Egypt, right? They spoiled or robbed the Egyptians. Everything they try to keep back from us, at the end of it all, it shall all belong to the righteous. And verse 18 in Job chapter 27, He builds his house as a moth and as a booth that the keeper make it. And the moth, we know, you know, you take a moth and squash it, it's like dust, right? So it's just all going to just fall apart. He'll just lose it all. And uh, verse 19, the rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He opens his eyes and he is not. So, um to not be buried or to not have a proper burial, you know, that was a disgrace. 
So to not be gathered, and I'm, I'm trying to say this um, in a way that you brothers and sisters can understand, because I understand it and I just need to be able to speak it to you. So let's read this again. Verse 19, the rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He opens his eyes and he is not. So when the wicked awake, when they open their eyes at the resurrection, they will be faced with God and they will be as though they had not been. And that did remind me of another parable concerning the rich man and Lazarus. So I want us to turn to the book of Luke Hold your place there in Job, and let's see another parable in Luke chapter 16 that Jesus would tell us concerning this gathering, how one would be gathered into um, you know, peace, having rest, having love, and the opposite for that one that didn't show no love. So Luke chapter 16 Verse 19 through 31. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Remember, Job is speaking this parable, but he also has some sores, right? The boils that the Most High would put on him. But um, that's not the point I was trying to make, so let me keep reading. Again, we're in Luke chapter 6. We're going to read 22 through 25. And it came to pass that the beggar died, this beggar who was full of sores, this beggar who would lay at the gate of the rich man, desiring just a few crumbs, he died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. You see how he was gathered into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. So both of them have died, one being carried into Abraham's bosom, you know, gathered into that peace, that safety, that eternal life, that love, that joy, that hope. The rich man died and was buried and in hell. So he wasn't in that same type of gathering. You see, he was in hell, being the lake of fire. He lift up his eyes being in torment and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Verse 25, but Abraham said, son, Remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things. How many people today have received good things in their lifetime? And likewise, Lazarus being the beggar, the poor, evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. So going back to Job chapter 27, Again, I know it's looking at another parable within this parable, which, um, you know, that's just the way that it was shown to me. And I can only share it with you, brothers and sisters. So verse 19, again, the rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He opens his eyes and he is not. Verse 20. Terrors take hold on him as waters. A tempest stealeth him away in the night. The east wind carries him away, and he departs. And a storm 
hurls him out of his place. So just how you see a storm, the waters are raging, the winds are blowing, terror and fear on the person that's caught up in this. That's just how the wicked will be in their latter end. So let us turn to 1 Samuel chapter 2. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2. I want us to read verses 6 through 10. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6 through 10. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. And also verse 10, again, I'm in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 10. The adversaries or enemies of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. And we know that would be Jesus. Okay, but pay attention to the language here where it's saying that the Lord shall thunder upon them. And then Job in his parable of Job chapter 27 and verse 20 through 21, speaking of the waters, right? A tempest being the storm, the east wind, and the storm hurling him out of his place. So it's to just paint that picture or image of just how it will be with the wicked in their latter end. It may seem they're prosperous now, just as the rich man was prosperous, but in the end, right? Two different destinations. The poor shall inherit all that the rich kept back from them. And we shall come out victoriously with our God. And so going back to Job chapter uh, 27, we read verse 20 and 21. So now verse 22, for God shall cast upon him and not spare. He would fain flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him and shall hiss him out of his place. And so let us turn back to Job chapter 22. I want to read 15 through 19. Uh, Job chapter 22, 15 through 19. And it says, Hast thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden, which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with the flood, which said unto God, Depart from us, and what can the Almighty do for them? Yet he filled their houses with good things, but the counsel of the wicked is far from me. And then verse 19, again, I'm looking back at Job chapter 22, just seeing the comparison with the language. The righteous shall see it and are glad, and the innocent laugh them to scorn. Okay, so the last verse in chapter 27 of the book of Job says, Men shall clap their hands at him and shall hiss him out of his place. So the righteous will be glad. They will laugh at the wicked. They will clap their hands. And this word hiss in this context, it is referring to uh, contempt or despise. 
So we used to say a phrase, you know, poof be gone, right? And old English, they would say away with him. So this hiss is to get their attention, to make a call, a sound. Um, you know, it's just, in other words, an expression, just to say we don't want them around, being the wicked, okay? So the righteous shall be glad when the wicked are off this earth, because it is only then that the righteous can have peace, that the righteous can let love prevail, that the righteous can be in safety and quietness when all the wicked are to be destroyed. And that is all I had for uh, Job chapter 27, uh, brothers and sisters. And again, you know, do your own studies. And if the Most High shows unto you, you know, something you'd like to share, you can leave a comment, comment or even start a channel of your own. You know, we're all trying to grow. We're all trying to learn um, from the scriptures. And I pray you, brothers and sisters, stay safe. Thank you for taking the time to um, read the book of Job chapter 27 and God bless. Shalom.